So this is a planarian worm, and this is a planarian worm cut in half. But don't worry, the worm is all right because these worms have the ability to regenerate the missing sides. And this is because of the electrical gradient of the wound, which is controlled by ion channels and signals whether it should regenerate a head or a tail. And it turns out that if you change the electrical gradient at the wound, then you can make it regenerate a head instead of a tail. And boom, you've made a two-headed worm. And you can go even further than this. You can basically cut the worm anywhere and tell it to regenerate a head anywhere. And so you end up with worms with two heads and a tail or even three heads or any combination of this. Okay, but so what if we take an organism like a frog that can't typically regenerate wounds? So normally, if you cut the limb off of a frog, the bioelectricity at the wound signals it to scar over and not regenerate. But if you take the wound and apply progesterone to it for just 24 hours, it changes the bioelectrical gradients at the wound. And these new gradients signal to the frog to regenerate a limb over the next nine months. Now these pictures are from when researchers tried this in 2018, and instead of scarring over, it regenerated a relatively functional stump. But now, just a few days ago, they posted a new paper with a new drug mixture that regenerated the leg, including the cartilage tissue and even the webbing. And this was a drug mixture before optimizing it. Basically, this was their first guess, and it worked out amazingly like this. Now, this works because these drugs signal to the frog that instead of scarring over, it should activate the genetic pathways it already has from when it was young and growing to simply grow its limb again. Okay. Okay, so how far can we take this? Well, in humans, obviously we scar over whenever we lose a limb. We can't normally regenerate limbs. The only exception is that when we are young, if we lose the top of our finger before the age of 10 or so, we can actually regenerate that finger. But obviously we want to go further than this. And this is the goal of Michael Levin's research. Obviously, while we are growing into adults, we already have these growth pathways in our genes. And so he thinks that similar to the frog, it's simply just a matter of activating them. Now, the next step in his research is that he's currently working on a bioreactor for a mouse, and I can't wait to see the results of this oh, study. And of course, next after this frog is mammalian application, so we're trying to we're trying to work up to human medicine at some point. And so he's convinced that this technology could apply to humans soon, and that all we would need to do is apply this biodome to the womb to regenerate an arm or a leg, similar to Deadpool, although maybe a bit slower than him. He also thinks that beyond limb regeneration, this could be the cure to cancer, in his own words. This is also extending to, to a problem of cancer. So one way to think about cancer is as cells that have basically, for whatever reason, stopped obeying the normal patterning cues of the body. They've, they've reverted to an almost unicellular uh, um, uh, identity where they treat the rest of the organism as, uh, as, as the environment and they do whatever they want. And so it turns out that processes of regeneration and development can reprogram or tame cancer cells. So old work in the salamander by uh, cutting off salamander legs that have a tumor on them, or in fact putting uh, aggressive human uh, cancer cells into embryos show that the surrounding environment can provide patterning cues that will cause these cancer cells to behave normally and to become part of normal tissues. And so this potentially has real implications for cancer therapy because uh, killing these cells with, uh, with, uh, with toxins, basically, chemotherapy may not be the only, the only way to go. And so this is what I love about his work. He completely flips most biological research on its head. Because after scientists discovered and mapped the human genome, most biology research focused on genetic editing. They believed that genes were the software of life Life that controlled our bodies or our hardware. But Michael Levin believes that genes are the hardware and that our bodies are simply an expression of the bioelectricity or the software. And that just by learning how to control and manipulate the bioelectricity, this is how we can update the software of humans. And taking this further, if this is the key to limb regeneration or even the solution to cancer, could it be an essential part of figuring out immortality? Well, we'll need to do some more research for that. But in my opinion, this is one of the coolest fields in biology that's often under discussed. I'm also interested in startups focusing on on bioelectricity. And I know I made a video about this topic before. It was actually shouted out on the Tim Ferriss podcast by Balaji. NASJAQ, N-A-S-J-A-Q, has a great video on bioelectricity and like limb regeneration. But I wanted to just try this in my new style. Anyways, NASJAQ out. See you guys in the next one. Helicopter, helicopter.